We are making a winter cozy classic, the shepherd's pie. This is one of my favorites. I have not shared it with you in years and it definitely needed an updated video for sure. It's so good and it, I think it's very easy and straightforward, which I love. To me, the thing that takes usually the longest amount of time to cook when it comes to this recipe are the potatoes to make the mash that goes on top of the shepherd's pie. Technically, this is a cottage pie because we're using beef, not lamb. Uh, you can definitely do this with ground lamb 100%. In our family, there's not a, lot of, a lot of lamb eaters, so we are gonna use beef and it's so good. For the potatoes, I just have russet potatoes and I have them cut into pretty large chunks. I always cut my potatoes really big when I am making any kind of mash because the smaller the cut, the more water they will absorb. The more water they absorb, the runnier your mash will be and the less flavor. So we don't want that and I cut them into nice large chunks. I just turned my water on so it's not even warm yet because you always want to add your potatoes to cold water and bring that up to a boil together. Um, that way the potatoes cook really evenly. I'm cooking a few extra potatoes because if my, my dad's gonna be around and he loves boiled potatoes with salt. So that's why there's a lot of potatoes there. But let that come to a boil. That's on, oh, turn itself off. To my large skillet with high sides, I'm adding my ground beef and I'm gonna break that apart as much as I can with my wooden spoon. You can also use one of those little masher things, um, the, those little meat mashers, but the back of a wooden spoon does the job. While that starts to brown, I'll get back to that in a second. Stuck in there. While that browns, you're gonna peel and dice some carrots, celery, and an onion. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that into just small little dice. I have my carrots frozen because if you follow me on Instagram, you know that a couple weeks ago, I think Joe went like, I don't know if it was Costco or what, but he came back with a 10 pound bag of carrots. And I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna go through it. So what I like to do is I like to peel them and dice them and stick them in the freezer and then you can add them to any soup, any stew, all season long and it's great. So I always have them on hand, nice and easy. I'm gonna dice my onion and my celery. My beef is looking good. You can see it's not totally cooked through yet. It didn't render too much fat because it was kind of on the leaner side. So I'm not gonna worry about draining it and I'm gonna go ahead and add I'm gonna add my carrots later, just cause they're, they're so frozen. I don't want them to lend so much moisture that these don't caramelize. Cause I want that onion to develop a little bit of color and for the beef to develop a bit more color. So I'll add those later. But if you're just using fresh raw carrots, go ahead and add them now. And I'm gonna just hit this with a pinch of salt and just let it go for like a solid seven to eight minutes. That looks fantastic. I'm gonna add in my carrots. Just stir them in. See how they are like super vibrant as soon as they touch that heat. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some tomato paste. I'm just gonna squeeze it all out of here as tight as I can. We gotta come up with a better system. Although I love the tubes because it means that you can just put the cap back on, throw it into the fridge, you know? It's just that I like to get every single bit out. Get that paste in there, just really work it in. Wake it back up, as I like to say. A couple of tablespoons of flour, and the flour just really helps give you a beautiful, luscious gravy, because the last thing we want is ground beef floating around thin liquid. That's just not gonna give you the same consistency that you should be getting from like a gravy based, delicious, just mouthful of goodness. I don't know how else to explain it. If you want, this is optional, I suggest it, but it's up to you. A little splash of a dry red wine. You really don't need much, probably had like a quarter cup in there, if that. But that does give you a little acidity, which is always nice. Just let that cook out a cup, like a minute. I'm gonna add some beef stock, along with a couple dashes of Worcestershire, Worcestershire. That just gives you really nice, 
depth. And then I'm just gonna add a little garlic and herb, just cause it has everything I want in there. It's got the thyme that I want. It's got the extra garlic and onion that I want. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this. Gives you such good flavor. All in one delicious little package. And I'm just gonna let this simmer about 20 minutes. Nothing on high heat, just like low. Let it hang out while the potatoes cook. And then at the last five minutes, I'm gonna add my peas right in, but I'm just gonna leave this on low. That looks stunning. Remember the last five minutes, I just added the peas and now I'm adding a good handful of parsley. I feel like it definitely needs that fresh herb action. Now this is gonna go into my casserole dish. Oh, that's heavy. Beautiful. It smells amazing. It tastes amazing. Beautiful. Potatoes are done. So now it's just about mashing them, which I'm doing right in here. And to this, I'm gonna add some butter. I'll try to cut this in small pieces. You can melt the butter and milk in a saucepan and add it in, but it's okay. It's so hot. The pan is so hot. It'll be just fine. Some milk, definitely seasoned with salt and pepper to taste. And then I'm going to add a couple of other things, you know, because I don't know, I've told you this before. I cannot get on board with a mashed potato without all the fat. I'm sorry. It's not something I eat often. So when I do, I want it to be so rich. I want it to like I want to be have to take a nap after I eat mashed potatoes. You know what I'm saying? Like that level of rich. And to me, you only get that when you add all the fats. I'm going to add some sour cream. I also like to add some cream cheese when I'm doing regular mashed potatoes, but this is a topper. So we're just going to go with that. And now at this point, I'm going to taste for seasoning. I'm going to grab a little spoon because So mashed potatoes just potatoes in general just take so much salt in my opinion and if it's under seasoned it really is not the same mm. an egg yolk gives you beautiful color and richness and some very sharp white cheddar hear me out okay just hear me out it's delicious and just do it <laughs> that's all i gotta say so worth adding, so worth doing. The egg yolk gives you a deeper color, but also a really nice richness, and it kind of helps the potatoes hold a little bit better, and we love that. Okay, I'm grabbing one of these. These are gorgeous. I could just eat big thing of mashed potatoes because you guys know I never met a potato I didn't like. Generously top your casserole. And now I'm gonna actually place this on a baking sheet because there's a good chance that it's gonna bubble up on the sides. And I honestly kind of love that. There's just something like very beautiful about that whole scene. Um, and this is just gonna go into a really hot oven at 400, like 20 minutes or so. I want everything to bubble, the potatoes to just grab a little color. I'm adding a few dabs of butter over the top and that's it. I'm going to place that on there and pop it in. Look at how gorgeous that is. And I told you it was going to spill just a little bit and I kind of, it always does. And I think it just adds to the charm of a shepherd's pie. A shepherd's pie should be bubbling. It should be inviting. It should be comforting. It should also be rustic. It, it is sensational. I did line it with some plastic and some parchment paper so that I don't have to clean anything. <laughs> now, you should let this rest. You should really let this rest a good 10 minutes before you dive right into it. We both know I have no patience, so we're just gonna go for it. And that corner is just screaming my name. Oh, like I said, you should definitely let this cool, let this set, because I just demolished it, but that's okay. That's okay. It has everything that I want. If you look in here, I'm trying to get this so that you see it. If you look in there, you've got that gravy. You've got that perfect gravy. You've got that mash that really holds up really well. It's perfection. 
and it's also really easy. And you know what you can add to this, which I know is really frowned upon, some people love it, some people hate it. I really kind of like it. <laughs> add a can of corn, drain the corn kernels, and it definitely adds a layer of sweetness. It's delicious. Again, if you let it cool, it won't be as runny when you serve it, just because everything will have a chance to sit. It's kind of like lasagna. You never want to cut into it right away, but patience is just not my virtue. My virtue. With co children, yes. With food, no. Oh my gosh. It's just a bust. It is the best shepherd's pie, cottage pie, you'll ever make. It's very easy and straightforward. It's calling your name. Go to laurainthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.